Hello, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read the book, Why the Crawfish Lives in the Mud, by our very own Jonette Downing, who's from Louisiana. But before I read the story, I want to share with you some pictures from our weekend. My boys came home from college, and we had our own crawfish boil right here at the house. And Burrow, our puppy, got to see crawfish for the first time. I hope you enjoy the story. This is the pot that we cooked the crawfish in. This is what the crawfish look like. This one has very large claws. These are the crabs that we caught in Lake Pontchartrain. This picture is of the crabs and the crawfish and all the vegetables cooking inside the large pot. As you can see, Burrow is very unsure of what to think about this crawfish. When the crawfish are done boiling, we put it in a pirogue and we serve it on the table. This is what the finished product looks like. And here we are eating crawfish off the trays on the picnic table, enjoying each other's company. Today we're going to read this wonderful book written and illustrated by Jonette Downing called Why the Crawfish Lives in the Mud. Long ago in the waters of the bayou, the crab and the crawfish used to be best friends. That is, until one hot, muggy day, when crawfish was feeling more lazy than usual. Crawfish was getting hungry, but he would not budge an inch to find a meal for himself. Then crawfish heard a loud commotion and saw a crab carrying a fish he had just caught in his claws. Suddenly, crawfish had the envie, the craving for fish, which caused another loud racket in his hungry stomach. Crawfish rubbed his belly. He thought for a moment, concocted a plan, and said, Sure is a hot one, eh, crab? That it is, replied Crab, balancing the fish in one claw and wiping the sweat of hard work from his brow with the other. That fish sure looks good, said Crawfish. Yes, indeed it does, said Crab. Well, I declare you are just too strong to carry such a small fish as that, said Crawfish. A small fish, asked Crab. Oh, yes, share replied Crawfish mockingly. As strong as you are, you probably can't even feel that small, tea tiny fish you got yourself there. Now one of those big fish down the bayou would give you a run for your money. Oh, yes, much bigger than that small, tea tiny itsy bitsy fish you got yourself there. Buku, much bigger. Now, that big fish down the bayou would be some fine eating for you. Yes, indeed, some fine eating, answered Crawfish. Crab looked up at his catch of the day, and suddenly it didn't feel so heavy, and it didn't look so big. Lazy Crawfish laid it on thick again and said, Of course, that small, tea tiny, itsy bitsy, puny fish you got yourself there would be fine eating for a weak little crawfish like me. But you, so big and strong, you need something bigger, much bigger. But, c'est la vie, that's life. I guess I'll go get that big fish down the bayou and try to drag it home. I'll probably hurt my back in the trying. Crab put down his dinner and said, Oh no, I wouldn't want you to hurt yourself, dear friend, crawfish. Here, you take my little fish, and I'll go down to buy you and get that big fish. You do that for me? asked Crawfish, hiding his devious grin. Sure I would, said Crab, as he handed his dinner to Crawfish and marched down the bayou. Crawfish laughed and laughed at the foolish Crab. Ha, <laughs> ha, I've outsmarted that silly Crab again, said Crawfish. He laughed so hard he turned red all over. Then 
crawfish ate until he could eat no more, rubbed his full tummy, and took a long nap in the hot southern sun. Click, click, click. Suddenly, crawfish heard a sound. Click, click, click. The sound came again, but this time it was closer and louder. Crawfish woke from his nap to find angry crab standing over him, clicking his mighty claws together. Crab yelled, you lazy kunai trickster. I walked up and down the bayou looking for that big fish and found none. Crawfish backed up a little because he could tell the crab was some furious. Crab said, you played another dirty trick and made a fool out of me for the last time. Crawfish backed up a little more. He had never seen crab this angry before. Crab continued, and to think I gave you my dinner because I felt sorry for you. Crawfish backed up a little more and trying to compose himself said, Ah, mes chers, I'm just Kuyang, you know, crazy. There's no need for you to be so crabby. Crab replied, Crabby? Why, I should throw you into the mud for pulling such a dirty trick on me. Oh, no, not the mud. I don't like the mud, said Crawfish. I'll get stuck in the mud and never get out. Anything, oh, anything but the mud. Now a frightened crawfish was backing away from the crab so fast and flicking his fantail so frantically that he unknowingly dug a deep tunnel in the mud and fell into it with a plop. Clods of mud encircled the tunnel's entrance and crawfish burrowed inside, was hidden from sight. Crab couldn't believe his eyes. Well, I'll be. What goes around comes around, said Crab. I guess you've outsmarted yourself this time and got exactly what you deserved. Now the mud will be your home forever. And to this day, the crawfish, also known as the mud bug, lives in the mud to keep away from the angry crab. Have you ever seen a mud bug's home? They look like a tall little volcano in the ground made out of mud. If you haven't seen one, go outside in Louisiana, see if you can find one. They should be everywhere in the spring. Stop the video here to read some words and phrases that were used in this story that we don't often hear in our language. And stop the video here to read about some crawfish fun facts. Here is a picture of a fish mound. If you find any crawfish mounds, please comment and let us know where you found them. Burrow says till next time, keep learning and keep reading.